how does red wine affect our bodies? And is drinking alcohol in moderate doses, any alcohol, not just red wine, is good for longevity and health? The answer is probably going to surprise you. Today, we'll explore what happens inside our bodies when we drink red wine. And what does red wine do to our longevity and youthfulness? We're also going to discover whether alcohol has anything to do with this impact. Is alcohol good for us? This video is part of our series about resveratrol dose. If you only care about red wine, then you don't need to watch these previous videos. This video is enough to blow your mind. Just jump to minute 5 where we focus on red wine. However, if you're serious about your longevity, preserving your youthfulness and your health, then this video is part of our investigation into resveratrol that started with this shocking discovery in Dr. David Sinclair's own study that showed that low resveratrol worked better for longevity than high resveratrol. It's been a complete shock to me as I've been taking one gram of resveratrol on alternate days for three years now. Since this discovery, I've gone over 200 studies on resveratrol and I'm here to tell you that this molecule is much more powerful and complex than I ever imagined. Today, we will continue in our investigation with another fascinating study answering the following questions. Is there additional evidence supporting what we discover in Dr. David Sinclair's study? That low resveratrol is effective for longevity. Not just in mice, but in humans. Do we have human study with low dose resveratrol? We must collect every data that we have. We need to figure this out, because this matters the most. Every habit that we're going to do is going to continue for the rest of our lives, creating a compounding effect. The devil is in the details, and we have to make sure that low dose resveratrol will work for humans as well, activating all longevity pathways and help us with our longevity. Let's continue with our investigation into the secrets of resveratrol right now. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. So, so far we have greater confidence that what Dr. David Sinclair found in his study was correct. Low dose resveratrol works in mice for longevity. But these, you may say, are just mice. Sure, mice are our evolutionary cousins, but what about us, humans? Do we have any evidence that low resveratrol actually improves longevity? So here we have a challenge. You see, it's impossible to make a similar study in humans. It's impossible to track humans for 80 or 90 years while taking all along low levels of resveratrol versus high levels of resveratrol. So how can we overcome this problem? One of the known benefits of resveratrol is that it reduces blood sugar. So the first question is, what happens if you take a human cell, put it on a dish and expose it to low levels of resveratrol? Would it react by reducing its sugar levels? This study take a look in exactly that. I'm reading from this study. Resveratrol long-term treatment differentiate INS beta cells towards improved glucose response and insulin excretion. Beta cells are human pancreatic cells isolated on a dish. The data demonstrated that chronic exposure to low-dose resveratrol expands the range of glucose dose response of INS IE cells, of these pancreatic cells. These human cells, deprived of resveratrol, returned to the phenotypes of naive cells. In other words, they lost the improvement of response to glucose. So low-dose resveratrol was enough to improve response to sugar by human cells on a dish. This is good. Okay, so this is the beginning point. What about the human body, the entire human body? So we don't have lifespan studies in resveratrol, as I explained. However, you and I are part of a massive experiment that includes low-dose resveratrol, and it's highly researched. You know what it is? Red wine. What is red wine? If you take red grapes and mix them with yeast, the yeast turn on the sugar into alcohol, that you probably know. This is no different than making a beer out of grains. But that's not everything that happens here. Grapes, especially red grapes, and yeast are not the best friends. So the grapes trigger their defenses as a response to the yeast exposure. The grapes, as a defense system, produce these low levels of molecules called polyphenols. These polyphenols help the plant, the grapes, survive and stay alive. So red wine is essentially a concoction of plant polyphenols dissolved in alcohol. One of those polyphenols is resveratrol. The question now is, is red wine a good model for low-dose resveratrol in humans? 
For that, we need to answer two questions. One, how much resveratrol is in red wine? And the second is, maybe the alcohol is really the main benefit here and not the polyphenols, if there is any benefit in red wine. So let's begin with the first question. How much resveratrol is in red wine? This study, called Resveratrol, How Much Wine Do You Have to Drink to Stay Healthy, says, I'm quoting, the average red wine can expect it to contain 1.9 plus or minus 1.7 milligrams of trans resveratrol. So we can say that in about 200 milliliter glass of red wine, you get about half a milligram of resveratrol, together, of course, with other polyphenols. So if you drink just one glass of red wine, or if you're a moderate red wine drinker and you drink one glass every day, you receive about half a milligram of resveratrol. This is very low dose. So that answer our condition. Red wine is a low dose resveratrol. Then you can say that red wine is not a good model for low dose resveratrol because it also includes alcohol. And there are many studies that speculate whether alcohol is beneficial for human health. Maybe it's the alcohol that possibly cause whatever benefits from red wine. So this study from 2021 has a clue. When you compare red wine to white wine, red wines contain roughly three to tenfold more resveratrol than their white counterparts. And the authors of this study noted that the benefits, the cardiovascular benefits, occur only in red wine. I'm quoting, cardiovascular beneficial effects were observed in humans after ingesting red wine daily for four weeks. However, this did not occur when white wine was used. So this gives us a hint that it's not the alcohol, it's the polyphenols. Soon in this video, I'm going to show you more evidence that alcohol isn't the cause of the benefits of red wine, it's the polyphenols. So let's agree that red wine is a good model for low-dose resveratrol in humans. It has a low dose of resveratrol, and it's not the alcohol that is responsible for whatever benefits that we may see. So we cannot track humans for 80 or 90 years, but we can measure the activation of longevity genes and pathways in humans. This terrific human study in 2021 did exactly that. They took nuns who did not drink red wine in the past two years and gave them red wine. But why did they choose nuns? I'm quoting for their reason. The only population that can be strictly controlled are monks and nuns who live in the same environment with the same routines with the controlled diets. So because their lifestyles are repetitive, known, and similar amongst all nuns, this is a great study for humans. So they gave them two glasses of red wine per day. Each glass contained 200 milliliters twice a day. They took it at lunch and at dinner. Let's see what they found in this very interesting study. Moderate red wine consumption increases the expression of longevity-associated genes in control human population and extend lifespan in fruit flies, 2021. Okay, so the goal of the study was to investigate the effects of moderate red wine consumption on the expression of longevity-related genes. These were the findings after two weeks. The first thing they saw, I'm quoting, two antioxidant genes, catalase and superoxidase, dismutase, were upregulated after red wine consumption for 14 days. So the first result was longevity genes of antioxidant defense were activated. The second thing they found, I'm quoting, an increase in the expression of important genes involved in aging like P53 or CER2 in 1. So they found more longevity gene activation, CER2, this is what Dr. David Sinclair researched, and P53, which is a cancer protection gene. Both went up. The third result they found, moreover, due to the important role that the immune system plays in the aging process, we determined the values of interleukin-1 and found that it was upregulated only in some of the nuns. The results were statistically significant. So the third result was another biomarker of aging, inflammation. It went down significantly in 70% of the nuns. Probably a genetic variation between the nuns. So these were the results, but the researcher didn't stop there. They also want to measure lifespan, but we cannot do that in human because you have to track them throughout their entire lives. So what they did, they gave fruit flies a modality of aging, red wine. Let's see what they found there. I'm quoting, for obvious reasons, longevity intervention studies cannot be performed in humans. We took 300 flies and 10% red wine was added to their diet. The difference between the two curves show a significant increase in the average lifespan of 7%. Maximum lifespan was not affected. 
Now, I want to stress this point. When you reduce mortality, you can increase the average lifespan. More flies lived longer, but it did not increase the maximum length of which every fly could live. Does that make sense? This is reducing mortality, and it's a very important component of aging. Now, I told you I want to show you further evidence that it's not the alcohol, it's the polyphenols in red wine. Let's see what they say in this study. In fruit flies, at least non-alcoholic wine was better than ordinary wine in terms of lifespan promotion. What they say here is also interesting. Our nuns refused to take the non-alcoholic red wine. I found that quite funny, actually. And the researcher concluded, the alcoholized wine may point to the damaging effect of alcohol itself on the general health of individuals. So this was one of the most fascinating studies I've read on red wine. But there was another one that also examined exactly what we want. Do the low-dose polyphenols and the low-dose resveratrol in red wine activate longevity genes in humans? This study is from 2014. What I like about this study, including the previous study, that both were conducted in healthy people, just like you and I. Unlike many studies on resveratrol that are done on unhealthy, sick individuals, which really change the metabolism of the individual and the goal of the study. Let's delve into the study. So this study is called Intake of Red Wine in Different Meals, Modulate different aspects of aging, including gene expression. So let's see what they found in this study. We evaluated the outcome of consumption of different meals with and without the additive effect of red wine. A total of 24 subjects, meaning they took 24 people, were analyzed for OxLDL, Catalase, GPX1, SOD2, Sirtuin2, and CCL5 gene expression levels before and after consumption. All of these are genetic expressions of longevity. This is what they found. When red wine is associated with different meals, values of oxidized LDL, which means oxidized cholesterol, are lowered. This shows an expression in antioxidant genes is increased, while CCL5 expression is decreased. In other words, what they found that red wine, again, increased the activation of longevity genes that are responsible for antioxidant defense of our bodies. They also found that GPX1 increased significantly in the comparison between baseline and all conditions with red wine. The bottom line of this study is that all the longevity genes they measure, besides SIR2, were activated by low-dose polyphenols in red wine. Let's get back to the core of the investigation. We've been seeing definitely that very low dose of resveratrol from red wine with additional low-dose polyphenols is enough to activate longevity genes in humans. These were similar to the mice studies in resveratrol. So here you have it, the second clue that low levels of resveratrol, especially in synergy with other polyphenols, work in humans too. Maybe by taking our resveratrol with a bit of red wine, we'll get also this synergetic effect. Besides humans, we also have seen that this low dose of resveratrol in wine also increases the average lifespan in insects, just like in mice where it reduces mortality in both Sinclair studies. So together we can say that low resveratrol, low dose resveratrol, increased longevity in humans, animals, and insects, suggesting that what we have discovered in Dr. David Sinclair's study is spot on. But then you may ask, if low resveratrol works so well, if we take more, maybe we will achieve better benefits, better results for longevity. Great question. For that, ideally, we need to search for a study that compared different doses of resveratrol in humans. But we only want to target now resveratrol alone, without the other polyphenols. Do we have such a study? This is not the complete video, and it has been taking me so long to record this. And now I've been going over 200 studies to complete this video. Now, in the meantime, until the video is going to be published, I've got a deluge of emails, and I didn't want to keep you hanging. So this is the first food for thought. It will help you to digest the rest of the story when you see it. In the complete version, coming soon, I'll take you through my investigation connecting dot after dot after dot. And every dot will give you another astonishing insight, not only about resveratrol, but also about red wine, olive oil, fisetine, conflict of studies in resveratrol, senescent cells, and more and more. And I must thank Dr. Davis Declare because if it wasn't for him, we would never have had this amount of data to analyze and think about. We don't have that privilege with other supplements in longevity, you should know that. So thank you, Dr. Sinclair, for that. And it's a great opportunity to say thank you so much and how grateful I am for everyone who contributes to my channel via Patreon. The trust you put in me 
and with your help and the energy boost that you give me, you keep me sharp to produce the best videos on this channel. And because of that, I want to do a special thing for you. And I'll release this video to you via Patreon system before anyone else. And it's without ads. You'll get notification from me directly, but of course, a week later, everyone is gonna see the entire thing for free. Until I got this recorded, stay healthy, stay young, and see you in the next video where we uncover the mind-blowing secrets of Resveratrol and its polyphenol family.